Hey, before we get into it, loosebeers.com, my tour is on sale now. The Melbourne Comedy Festival is happening. You just missed two shows, or you attended them. Thank you for coming in Melbourne. I have two final shows in Melbourne next Friday and Saturday. Loosebeers.com, they're like half full, so get your tickets now. They're going to sell out. Then after that, we've got uh, Sydney, Newcastle, uh, Gold Coast, Hobart, Launceston, Adelaide, Ballarat, Warnable, Shepparton, and... We've just locked in a Brisbane date that might be on sale now or in a couple of days. Check my website, uh, but we've got Brisbane locked in. And look, we've been talking to Manchester and London, and that might be happening at some point. Not for a while, but it's we're, we're working on it. All right, enjoy the episode, loosebeers.com. Uh, get your tickets. I can't wait to see you at the show. Manchester. Manchester, bottle water. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 332 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, the very first episode. No braces. Check check out my teeth. Look at that. It's done. It's over for you and for me. I'm so stoked. I'm really, really happy. You know what I did when I got my braces off? Mm-hmm. I went to, I went to immediately, I left the orthodontist and I went straight to snits and I got myself a fucking wrap. Uh, and then I walked to the beach and I took a bite out of it and then I cried (laughs) because I haven't taken a bite out of anything for fucking ages. Everything I've been like, like with the braces, they've been shitting me so much. I've been like kind of tearing it or cutting. I've been eating burgers with the, with cutlery. It's horrible. Last night I had pizza with my teeth. Ooh, it was so good. It's so it's so it's such a fucking freeing thing. You know what? I reckon I look way different again, and that's what everyone has been saying. I think the all the muscles around my face have relaxed because it, when you have braces, all you're trying to do is avoid the inside of your lips, like touching them. So my face is like kind of relaxed, uh, and I look different again, which is good. A lot of people, uh, the photo that I posted when I got my braces off, a lot of people were insisting that. It was generated by AI or I was using a face app on mm, myself. Beauty filter. I'm, uh, yeah, Keelan reckons I was using a beauty filter. I'm happy to report that I actually took that photo and then ran it through face app for real. And <laughs> it kind of did nothing. Now, normally, oh, okay. normally when I, when I put my, my face through the face app, like before surgery, I look like a completely different bloke. But this instance... It kind of just, look, so this is the, we'll put it up on screen as well. This is the image that I posted. Yeah. Unedited. All right. Now have a look at this. That's the AI generated one (laughs) where I applied every single filter that I could, the chin, everything. All that's really done is darkened my beard and my eyebrows. Yeah. And whitened your teeth. And whitened my teeth. That's it. Yeah. It made my teeth look really, it looks like I've got veneers in. But other than that, Right? It hasn't done anything. So I think I can comfortably say that I just have the Chad filter on properly. All right? I did it, all, I did it organically, right? Like a real man with, with multiple surgeries and years of orthodontics. Mm, facts. And now this is what I look like. Dude, I can't wait to perform and then get off stage after an hour and a half of yelling and go, oh, my, my mouth isn't bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Every show after Perth, I come off and I go, oh, I'm bleeding. Oh, I'm in pain, and it will get worse every single performance. But no, no longer. You know what though? I've um, I've I've run into a bit of a problem uh, since getting them off and and having full use of my mouth. Uh, I showed you the 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 um, the before and afters, Keelan from the orthodontist, of yeah. the inside of my mouth. They have a camera that runs along your teeth and gums. So you saw how small my mouth was on the inside. Yep. Now that it's changed and I'm actually taking bites out of things. Um, before, I used to take like a giant bite and I would get a tiny amount of food. And then I would sit there chewing for 45 minutes. And by the time the person sitting across from me had finished their meal, I was maybe 20% through mine. That was what everyone complained about, that I eat slow. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I took a, uh, what I thought was a big bite and I almost choked on my food because I got way too much food. Because my mouth is so fucking big, I can't get a handle on how much food I'm getting in there. So that's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, but that would mean there'll be a great career ahead of me if I wanted if I wanted to become a blowjob princess. So there's pros and cons to everything. And right now I'm mainly in my pros. It was very, very funny at the orthodontist, right? Because getting your braces off, it's a long process, it's pretty painful. 
it's that for like maybe an hour with your mouth open. And um, you have the orthodontist and you then you have their assistant and they're over the top of you and they and, and every now and then they'll mutter to, you know, left D3, scalpel. Um, just muttering things to their assistant and then they'll go, open your mouth wider to you. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> that's That's really what they do whenever you get, Whenever you get any type of dentistry or orthodontics works, you can tell when they're talking to you because they're yelling at you and they're muttering to their assistant. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's talking a fucking in a in a language. Uh, uh, cavity on D six, uh, uh, left left ventricle uh, widening. Uh, can I get the uh, the pain you later? Can I get the the electroshock drill, please? Uh, can you hold him down while he screams? Uh, can you open it wider? That's <laughs> that's what it's been for me for the last two years. But on my final one, where I'm getting my braces off, the the ortho's in there, and he's doing, and then he goes uh, uh, to the left, love, and then I move my head to the left, and then he jabbed me, and I went, ow, and he went, not you. I'm like, oh, all right. Firstly, why are you calling me love? <laughs> Secondly, why are you calling the assistant love? Mm. Anyway, it turns out the assistant's name was love. <laughs> really? That's a, on her name tag. <laughs> her name is love. <laughs> so the guy's like, to your left, love. And I go, ow. And he goes, not you, her. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so that's done. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy. And uh, I'm just stoked. It's so it's so good now to just be done with it because the braces was like a reminder that it would still the process is still going it's all happening there was still a lot of pain and a lot of restrictions but now man I think that uh, it's just it's just completely finished all I have to do is go in for like one review with the surgeon to make sure he's happy they do an X ray uh, and then I think I have like follow up appointments with the ortho every like six weeks to make sure that my, that my, my teeth are not moving, but they are no pain, no bullshit, nothing. So it's actually, actually fully, fully, fully over. And to, uh, I know I've been saying it a lot, but to everyone who's uh, stuck around while I've been going through this fucking process, I really appreciate it. And it's done. And now I don't have to stop. You know, I had to, after I was booked to perform at um, one of Greeley's rap events, uh, the, day, uh, the day I got them off, uh, or the day after, sorry, and I, I, my, my face was just hurting too much after I got out that I just, I cancelled it, and that sucked. But I thought, fuck, that's, that's the last thing that I have to cancel because of all of this shit. Whereas before, it's just been, no, sorry, changed my mind, too sick, my face hurting, all of that. I've got an appointment, all that shit. So that's the last thing I have to cancel. And uh, unfortunately, it was a rap battle, but. You know, that, that could be a good thing as well because as much as I I love Greeley and I think he's such a talented artist and I love rap battles as well, um, the rap battle fan is a different beast. Um, and uh, I don't know about you, Keelan. Have you been to many rap battles? I've been to quite a few. I love it. One. I love them. Did you get sick after you went? I did. I got, I got sick. Yeah, there's something about the rap battle audience they carry pathogens, it seems, because I, you know, I'm a performer. I shake hands with hundreds of people every time I do a show. I very, very rarely get sick unless I've very overworked myself. But if I spend 30 minutes at a rap battle event, I'm coming down with the worst cold <laughs> that I've had in months. There's something about the Oz rap battle scene that they, they carry pestilence. But every audience has that, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh players, they're very stinky people. They're, they're, they're the trading card audience, they, they have a stench to them to the point where Yu-Gi-Oh in their, in their tournaments, their official tournaments, like sanctioned by Bandai, the rules that Bandai, the company that owns Yu-Gi-Oh, they've put in their official tournament rules. This goes from, from amateurs all the way up to world championships there's actually a clause about personal hygiene and smell and you can be penalized for stinking to the point where if a judge comes over after a complaint and gives you a sniff they can tell you to pause the game and leave and change clothes or shower and if you don't you lose and and think about think about how 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 horrible the customer base for your product must fucking stink for you to 
write down in official language that they stink. Think of the trade-off. Like how much money are we losing? Are we losing more money from people avoiding our product because our fans stink? Or will we lose more money by offending our stinky fans by telling them that they stink? Because if you ever had to tell someone that they smell like shit, that they stink, it's a delicate process. It's only something I've, I've ever had to do a couple of times in my life. And rarely does the person go, oh, thanks, man. Normally they go, ah. <laughs> and you see something break inside them. But it's important. And it's not a problem that I would notice. I'm, I'm trying to think of like, what rule would I instate at my shows that would potentially hurt the feelings of my customer base? I feel, I feel I'm, I'm struggling here, but I feel like Keelan has something immediately. Um, soggy handshakes. Yeah. Yeah. Like sweaty yeah. hands. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know what? That's what I'll put on the on next year's tour. I'll put on the tickets a little clause. If you have soggy hands, all good. Would love to have you there. <laughs> and in fact, still will meet you. But you know what? Mandatory fist bump. <laughs> if if what we're going to do is we're going to take down everyone's um, credit card information. And if I shake a hand and I get sogged, <laughs> you get charged extra on the way out. That's fair. I think that's fair. Or if you've purchased a poster and you sog me, I rip it up in front of you and I, and I push you over down the stairs and I go, look at these, he's got a soggy hands. And then, and then, and then I'll get, they'll call the police and I'll go, officer, I didn't push him. He had his hand on the handrail and his hands were so soggy that he actually slipped. It's, it's his fault. And, and the rest of the audience will back me up. It's something I worry about because I feel like I have dry hands, but I don't know if maybe my hands are really clammy. And I, Why it's, do, I, it's what just not is some, clammy? It's just I not something I can tell. I, no, you don't. You're fine. Oh, I have very dry. I, I barely sweat anywhere on my body. Even when I work out when it's hot, I'm just not a moist guy. <laughs> um, but I can't. My my thing is with uh, with greeting people. I can't I can't fucking hug people. I'm too I'm too, just too differently shaped. <laughs> like I just like don't please don't hug me. <laughs> well, unless I, I feel like unless you're like six two, it's not gonna it's not gonna work out for us. You know, especially with girls that come to my show or shorter shorter girls, I just end up knocking their teeth out with my shoulder, or or um. I'm like, do I bend at the knees or do I just stand up straight and then they're just kind of having a really intimate moment with my belly button? Mm. It's, you know what? We can hug, but bring a step ladder. That's, that's the rules. Loosebeers.com, get your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So next episode, guys, it's episode 333, the manifestation episode. And that's where we're going we're gonna to manifest... Something now. I did ask for for suggestions last episode of what we should manifest, uh, and I got and I actually got a lot of a lot of responses on that episode, and none of them were suggestions for that. It was all um, just just you guys just completely ignored that one. So you know, it's good to know that I've got a team playing audience here that are just, that I'm just like, hey, I I need a suggestion, and they go, ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, man. So when are the Brisbane shows being announced? Just questions about unrelated shit. Soon. All right. We just got a date. Um, all right. What else did I want to talk about? Okay. So I, went, I did, did this rap battle thing, right? And, uh, it was a great event. Um, Greeley's part of this big rap battle event and they had two events in the lead up to it. One of them was the actual rap battle. The other one was a weigh in event for the rap battle, which is very funny because you don't need to weigh yourself to do a verbal battle. All right. You're writing gay little poems about another man while you stare into his eyes surrounded by a bunch of other men listening intently to the rhymes. And I was booked to perform on this. And uh, I've learned my lesson when it comes to rap battle audiences because one time I hosted a giant rap battle. I think it was uh, it was a huge event, like hundreds of people there. And I just did terribly. I did terribly because I showed up like I was doing a comedy set when really what they wanted to hear was rhyming and wordplay and rhyme schemes. 
and I got up on stage and I start telling my jokes, right? This is a few, this is years ago now. This is maybe 20, fuck, this would have been 2019 maybe. And I get up there and I start performing and they're really listening intently. And uh, I get a couple of laughs, but then within two minutes, the audience, I really feel them collectively go, hang on a minute, this guy isn't rhyming. This guy's a fucking terrible rapper. They thought I was getting up there to just rap a cappella, no beat. And they were really into it because the rap battle fan, they love, they love wordplay, they love rhyme schemes, they love paying attention to words. And then I get up there and they're listening to me and they go, this guy is, a, is the worst rapper on this rap battle event. This guy sucks. And they don't start booing. They don't not laugh. They do something even worse. They just tune out. I've never, like, here's the thing. The difference between opening for someone as a comedian versus a musician. I reckon opening for someone as a musician is way worse. It, when you have, even when you have a bad, before, like the bad opening act as a comedian versus the bad opening act of a musician, I reckon musicians have it way worse. Because even if you're bombing as a comic, they're at least paying attention to you and you could maybe turn it around. Whereas every mu musical opening act I see, the crowd isn't even looking at them. <laughs> like they're just standing there yelling over the top of the music. That's more of an inconvenience than an addition to the night while they get drinks, you know? Like never once have I been performing, doing poorly, and then have a third of the audience go... Yeah, can I get a, a, a rum and coke, please, and make that a double? What do you want? What? Huh? No, we can't. No, those drinks are illegal now. Can I just get a Red Bull and a shot, but don't put them in the same glass? Thank you. While I'm fucking performing my ass off, trying to talk about my dick to make people laugh. But musicians have to do with deal with that. So I'm up there at this this rap battle event and I'm doing very poorly and people are starting to tune out. And I'm doing this old joke that you may have heard of. It was basically about my mum being worried about me being molested when I was a kid. And this is one part where I reference of like, oh, maybe, maybe she thought I was a really sexy child. And then one of the guys in the front row goes, you were, you were a really sexy kid. Now, me again in comedy mode, I go, oh, <laughs> look out guys. We've got a bloody pedophile in. Forgetting the fact that I'm at an Australian rap crowd with a bunch of people who have gone to jail before uh, and who hate nothing more uh, than pedophiles. Like it goes it goes cops, then pedos at the rap battle group. And they go, look out, we've got a bloody pedophile here. And he immediately flips the switch from yelling at me to just running at me with 10 of his friends, literally storming the stage. My brother and his friends are in the audience as well and bless their hearts and souls, they start running at the group to defend me. And I see them and I go, oh, that's not going to help me at all. We're just all going to get bashed now. <laughs> Luckily, the stage was really high and behind some barriers. If it was like a smaller event, I just would have been fucked. And I kind of wrap my set up because I've, I've accidentally almost caused a fucking riot of like 10 dudes rushing the stage, security getting involved, my brother and his friends rushing at this group to try and get in between us. A bunch of people came and grabbed me, got me off stage, hustled me off. I'm like, dude, what the fuck happened? And Greeley goes, look, dude, I think you need to apologize. I'm like, I'm not fucking apologizing. I told the joke. And he goes, no, 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 I'm serious, man. Like for your safety, <laughs> you need to apologize. I'm like, I'm not getting back on stage and apologizing for a joke. And he goes, please. <laughs> Please, Lewis, for your own safety and for mine and, and even the security guards, please apologize. I'm like, why? Who is this person? And he tells me who this person is. And I go, oh, I should apologize. <laughs> like I just picked the heaviest, scariest motherfucker and crew in the entire room of, of hundreds of scary looking people. I picked the one person that you probably should not fuck with and call them a pedophile. So later in the event, right, one of the guys from their crew is battling in the event. So all of those 10 dudes get on stage with me 
and they're all just staring at me. And I go, fuck, all right, it's now or never. And really, maybe I should have just gone up there and started a fight because in hindsight, the guy probably would have broken my jaw and then I could have gotten my, my jaw fixed much earlier. <laughs> you know, so, so maybe I was actually wrong to apologize. But I go up to this guy and I go, hey, man. Um, and he goes, hey. And I go, fuck, he's even scarier in person right up front, right up close. And I go, look, dude, I just wanted to come over here and, you know, I did one of those, those I did one of those things that sound like an apology, but it's kind of just gaslighting. Um, <laughs> that's a really good one. If, if you have like a, a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, um, <laughs> I, uh, I can't, or, 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 you know, if you, if you have like a, like a child and if you're like a really toxic, um, I went up to them and I went, Hey man, I, I look, I just wanted to say like, uh, you know, I don't, I probably shouldn't have called you a pedophile and, you know, I don't think that you are one. It's just like you were, you know, I was doing comedy and you yelled at me. And normally when I'm doing comedy stuff, if someone yells at me in the audience, I have to say something back or or otherwise I look like a shit comedian. And, you know, like, and he goes, oh, yeah, look, mate, it's all right. It's just, you know, I just got out of jail like five days ago. And uh, if when you're in the pen... If someone puts you on the pedo, if someone says you're a pedophile, if you don't bash them, uh, the, the the boys will rape you. I'm sure you understand. And I went, oh, yeah, I yeah, I totally understand that. Yeah, I've been there. I, I absolutely understand that. Sorry. And then I backed away slowly. Uh, and then later in the night, one really little guy came up to me and he was really offended about a joke that I said. And he starts yelling at me and arcing up to me. And he's very small. He's like 5'4". And I just kept like taking a step back and taking a step back. I'm like, dude, go away. And he keeps yelling at me. And then the really scary guy and his friends come over and just grab the dude by the shoulder and goes, come with me, mate. Never saw him again. <laughs> so I actually made a very dangerous ally. The guy just fucking Batmaned him. Never saw that guy again. Um, so rest in peace to that guy. <laughs> And, uh, and and woe betide anyone who gets offended by my jokes. Where were those fucking boys during the protest? That would have helped me. We interrupt this episode to bring you a very special episode. I mean, uh, message. Uh, just look, support me on Patreon, all right? You get early access to the episodes. Uh, they come up very early. You get also one bonus episode every single week. If you can't get enough of me, I've got more of me. You get access to the Discord, and it really, really, really does support me right now. We've got no sponsors. The video's just starting back up, and the show's... Uh, just kicking up as well. So Patreon is like the main way that I'm funding my food, literally. So patreon.com slash Lou Spears. If you want to support me, now's the time. There's a yearly option as well. Check it out. Anyway, back to whatever I'm yelling about. Really interesting things actually happened uh, in this. Have you seen this uh, on TikTok, Keelan? This guy who, he kind of blew up on TikTok by showcasing shit rentals of Australia. Yeah, Purple Pingers. Yeah, a guy called Purple Pingers. Uh, he has this uh, this series on TikTok where he just like, uh, it started off him just uh, posting screenshots from like rental websites or maybe stuff that he's found on Facebook of really terrible and unsafe uh, rental homes and showcasing them. And then also he would point out which real estate agent was trying to rent out these like dangerously unsafe homes. Uh, and that caused a lot of uh, controversy. Um, but recently, he's gone even further than this. Um, and good on him, by the way. I think, you know, showcasing shit rentals because obviously we have uh, in Australia, we've got like a bit of a housing crisis going on as we do in, in pretty much everywhere in the first world seems to have a housing crisis where there are heaps of homeless people. Mortgages and rental prices are skyrocketing and there are just a bunch of wealthy people that are hoarding homes, raising rent and regular people are fucked. Um, and... Uh, this guy has kind of done a lot more for renters than uh, a lot of the the, uh, the boards and official bodies that are supposed to protect renters have done because he can actually get a lot of eyes on these unsafe rentals and get them fixed up and get landlords to actually fucking do what they're supposed to do. But now he's done something that I think is super interesting. He's actually compiled lists of homes that are vacant but owned that are not being rented out. And he's actually posted these online and is talking to 
homeless people and sending them the address of vacant homes for them to squat in, which in Australia and a lot of other countries is uh, technically legal, where if there's a home that's been vacant for a certain amount of time, you can just go and live there if there's no locks on it. So that's, in at least in Australia, that's the rule. If the door is locked and you break in, you're breaking the law. If the door has no lock on it, and it's a vacant home, you're not breaking the law by going in and staying there. Now, I'm a bit of an enterpriser, as an enterprising man myself. If I'm homeless, and I know there's an empty home that's been empty for a year, and there's a lock on the front door, if I kick the door in, break the lock off, and go in, who's who's to say that there was ever a lock? Or that if there was a lock, and you could prove that there was a lock, who could prove that it was I who broke the lock? Maybe it was a vandal, and then I walked in the open door. I haven't broken the law. I can't go to jail. So this guy went on the project, and uh, classic project of just trying to create moral outrage and uh, put this guy on the spot. This is just the internet. Our microphones are turned off. No, they're not. They're not? Oh, okay. One and two off. Okay, I almost lost it. Um, Anyway. We're three and four. Uh, This is just the interview part. Okay. Purple Pingers himself, it's Jordan. G'day, Jordan. Look, I know we're in a a pretty serious housing crisis, but do you really think that encouraging people to squat on private property is the way to fix it? Yeah, look, let me answer your question by asking you another question. Um, Do you think it's right that we have thousands of vacant, abandoned homes while we have people living on the street? See, this uh, this is where the project has really fucked up here is all of the producers and all the hosts of this incredibly out-of-touch show have looked at this guy and gone, oh, yeah, TikToker. We can trash a TikToker. But what they fail to understand is that this guy is actually very autistic. <laughs> and uh, you can't beat them in an argument. I don't, oh, but is this, is this the right way to handle it, though? I mean, shouldn't be focused on policy? Um, Yeah, I think there's definitely room to focus on policy, but what do we do in the meantime when people are on the street while we're focusing on policy? Use the word abandoned. Who owns a house and abandons it, Jordan? This is such a this is such a great question from Steve Price, the resident boomer on on the project. Um, Google it. (laughs) You know, like, aren't you supposed to be a fucking host of a TV show? Like, you go. Who would own a house and abandon it? Which at first, you know, when you first hear about this is actually like the first question that pops in the head of like, oh yeah, who would own a house and leave it empty? Because that does sound like a stupid thing to do. But then, you know, you you can fucking Google it and you can actually find a census report on this. And it's tens of thousands of homes that are like habitable, but just left empty from foreign investors that just buy homes and just treat them as like things to fucking hoard and don't even want to be bothered with renting them out at all. Uh, many people, I don't know if you've ever gone down the street and seen like houses empty for decades, but uh, I certainly no, have. No, I haven't. No. Oh, really? Interesting. Nope. How many, do, do you have any abandoned investment properties, Steve? No, I don't. But, I mean, I'm just trying to get to the economics of this. If someone yeah. buys a property, I mean, yes, we've had land banking, obviously, mm-hmm. from foreigners, mm-hmm. but that's not widespread. There's not thousands of them. Uh, on the census night, we had 10% of all housing stock. 10% of homes are just abandoned. I mean, in, in this area, I reckon I could, uh, I know of four, I think. There's one on the main road down there. There's one around the corner from me. And then I feel like there's two others that we regularly drive past. You know a few? There's one next door to me, yeah. Yeah, that have just been empty f- ever since I've lived here. So like years. And uh, that I guess, you know... That's, that's the thing of like, obviously, squatting is not good. It's not the ideal situation. But if I'm homeless and if I've got kids that are homeless, I'm living out of my fucking car. If there's an empty house that's been empty for like a year, fuck yeah. Why not? It's better than living under a bridge. Like all these people are blowing up at this guy online going, oh, you're stealing homes. And it's like, well, yeah. Fuck yeah, but it's totally better than having people just living on the street while it's fucking raining and cold. Especially, like, what are you stealing? If these... I mean, obviously, 
let's hope they're not damaging the homes, right? If you go in there and you fucking burn it down, that sucks. But if you're literally just looking for a place to keep dry and warm and un- unmolested by dangerous people on the street at night, then fuck yeah, I'd much rather a homeless person be squatting in a house that isn't being used uh, when they're not fucking using it. They're not renting it out. They're not planning on selling it. They're not repairing it. It's just fucking sitting there. Why is it better to have a person on the street and an empty house than have those two things be combined and fucking house that person while it's not being used? while policy is being sorted out. Because that's the fucking thing. Homelessness is getting so much worse in this country. And it's like, I would much rather these people uh, are in homes that aren't being used. No one's getting hurt. And the fucking investor that has this house that's just sitting on it should not be allowed to do that. Um, Which is it. I think it's a really fucking weird thing to get upset about. Keep going. Vacant. But like, you know, I ask people for less than 48 hours and I've already got over 300 responses. Um, So, and like, I'm not the government, so I don't have the resources to ask everyone. But yeah, if you've got like over 300 places that have been abandoned for more than two years, some up to 20 years, uh, I think it's a problem that exists. Thank you for clarifying. You are not indeed the government. Zing, (laughs) Wally with a bloody zing. Got him. Um, (laughs) So you put this up. Are are people actually moving into these homes? Um, Yes. Not from the public ones, though. So not from the ones you've listed? Yeah. So it's happening, what, privately? Word of mouth or something? Yeah, yeah. Like, if someone, if someone needs a house, they can reach out to me and I can send them an empty home. What oh. sort of people are moving into these homes? Are you seeing families with kids and...? Um, it's mainly people just experiencing housing insecurity and that can, yeah, that can look Bucky's like Bucky's good. They're really, they're really trying to get him, get him here and he's just, like... Man, for it, I don't. I, I assume this is his first interview. The guy's fucking nailing it. They're trying to trip him up and make him sound like an idiot or make him sound like a vindictive, thieving person. And he's just like, "Yeah, I think that um, empty houses should be full of people that need housing." Um, and I also agree that this is not an ideal solution. Hopefully, politicians will create policy that eliminates homelessness. In the meantime, do they hook the house up to electricity? Power, gas. Haven't asked him. So, <laughs> so, so they're so they're just basically camping out in abandoned homes with no power. Look at this fucking idiot trying to make it sound like someone inside a house with no power and electricity is like worse than being in the elements. Oh, so they're just in a house without power. Yeah, how the fuck do you think we lived without power before? In shelter. Oh, wow. So have you ever seen a fucking homeless person when it rains? It doesn't look fun. Where do homeless people go when they don't have a house? Not connected to power. They go underneath a fucking roof, a bridge, a shop front, a fucking gondola in a park. Like, yeah, it's better than having them on the street. Yeah, I guess like it's raining in Melbourne at the moment. So um, I guess camping out inside is probably... Better than camping out in a bush. Oh, he's just said, yeah, see, I would be yelling. He's doing better than me. People to, you know, break the locks and, and move into a property. I mean, you say you don't do that, but if someone finds out from you, Jordan, that this house in this street's vacant, has been for two years, and it is locked, how do you know they're not going to go around there and bust the lock and get in? I'm definitely not advocating that anyone well, I know breaks you're not into advocating it, but how do you house. know it's not going to happen? Well... Like, squatting's legal. Breaking and entering is not legal. And I think that's where I'd leave it. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the, that's the thing. I, I, I really do think... Like, I, I, I don't have a problem with, with people owning houses and, and homes and, and people renting them out. I really don't. Um, I think there's there's definitely, like, a, a, maybe a problem with people owning hundreds of homes. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I do. I just think that owning lots of properties and intentionally keeping them vacant, that should be illegal uh, or it sh- you should be taxed. Like you, it, that you should be taxed so much for doing that that it actually becomes unfeasible to do that at all. Like if you have a home that's, that you own and it's vacant for, for more than 
I don't know, a year, you shouldn't be allowed to just hold on to that. Unless you're unless you're making it, unless it's like unsafe to have people in and you're fixing it up because renovations can take fucking years. Unless you're doing that, doing something with it. If you're just owning a place that a human being could live in and doing nothing with it, then you should be fucking taxed to make that unfeasible. And it's like, all these people are going, oh no, you can't let people squat in empty homes. And it's like, okay, so who's the victim here? The homeowner who's not using the house? They actually have two great options. Either they could just rent out that house, make heaps of money, or sell the house, make heaps of money. Like those are their two options and both of them end with making money. Like that's such a better option than fucking leaving it vacant when there are like every single apartment that's a shithole studio apartment has a line around the block of people trying to rent it. Like we're at a place we're at a place now where even people who can afford rent can't get homes because like fucking hundreds of people are applying for rentals. It's crazy. Um the amount of demand that there is and to hear that there's like potentially 10% of homes that are, let's say most of those are, are, are good enough for people to actually live in. They're not dangerous. It's crazy to just have them be fucking empty. I think there's nothing wrong with people who need it going into these homes and staying there. Well, how'd you like to have someone squat in your place that you own? Uh, it's not vacant, nor is it an investment property. <laughs> what a fucking dumb question. Because that's that's the thing. Like if these, uh, if these places have been vacant for more than a year, right? You're assuming that no one fucking looks at them. How would you like it if someone lived in your house? Well, I wouldn't even know. If I had a fucking home that I owned, that I didn't look at, that I had no intention of renting out and no intention of selling, I'd have no fucking idea. Theoretically, I've got house insurance on it too. So some homeless person burns it down. Oh no, now I've got a big insurance, you know? I don't see the victim in this crime. I just see like a person who's really in need getting a temporary place to hide out. And obviously there's all these other fucking things of like, oh, well, if there's a vacant home and someone's in there and you're not allowed to have locks on it, then yeah, absolutely. A bunch of horrible things can happen to people in those situations where you could end up having people fighting over the house. You could end up hitting multiple people living in those homes. But you know what? That shit's happening anyway to these empty homes. And that shit happens anyway to people on the street I would think that it'd be less likely to happen to someone squatting inside a home in a residential area. Can't, nor is it an investment property, so. You understand um, my question, don't you? Uh, it, look, if I had an investment property that was vacant for more than two years, for example, I would put it on the list. That's enough. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that there's, there's any, anything wrong with that at all. And I think it's fucking crazy that potentially 10% of homes are just empty. And maybe of that 10%, you, you'd have to think at least 70 to 80% of those are like safe to live in. Um, but even if they're not, it would, be, it would be safer than the fucking street or underneath a tunnel at night in the rain during winter in Melbourne. Um, how long have we been going here, Keelan? 40 minutes. Uh, so shout out to Purple Pingers. Um, strange voice, but uh, you, you smashed it. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway, speaking of, of, uh, of insane people... Um, Jojo Siwa uh, is having, she's transforming before us. The Jojo Siwa, I mean, how would you explain her? She was, she got her start on a show called Dance Mums. Is that true? Or did she start yeah, on yeah. YouTube? No, it was Dance, Dance Mums, Mums and then YouTube. Then YouTube yeah. yeah, so she so started on Dance Mums, which was a reality TV show where where um, fat mothers would send their um, their terrified children in to be bullied by a toxic fat woman who can't dance herself uh, and they would uh, pirouette their children into eating disorders. Um, and it was, yeah, basically just like the most toxic fucking environment for a child you could possibly imagine where not only are they getting like uh, verbally and emotionally abused by the woman teaching them to dance, but they're also getting filmed and made famous for tolerating that abuse. Um, and then Jojo Siwa kind of spun... Uh, out of that TV show and started her own YouTube channel uh, where it was like, I mean, what did she do? Just like children's videos. She used to make like JoJo vlogs where she would do JoJo challenges and drink JoJo yeah. juice. 
Lo- I, of course you know everything about this woman. Logan Paul for seven-year-old girls. Is that what yeah, we would yeah, say? Like It was during the Logan Paul vlogs era and she was doing it as well and it was for children. Then Now she's grown up and uh, she's gay. She's a lesbian woman. Uh, and uh, she started making music and she's trying to spin out of the children's entertaining niche that she was in because obviously all of her fans have grown up and she herself is not a child anymore. So she's figuring out what she wants to do. And uh, she wants to be uh, an edgy, dark pop star, but she just seems to be doing it in the weirdest way possible. So before, she was just all like pink and glitter and bows. Like they used to sell the JoJo Seaward bows in Walmart and stuff like that. Um, But now... If you look at her, she looks exactly the same. She's just changed the color pink for the color black. Like she seems pretty convinced that she's done a whole rebrand and she's created something incredibly unique and different. But all I'm seeing is she looks the same. She's just got black glitter on now. Yeah. Instead of pink glitter. She's trying to be like a emo sex symbol kind of thing but her lips have you looked have you seen her lips they look like clams <laughs> <laughs> this what else is funny as well is um she's talking about how unique and everything she's doing is but um she's just dressed like kiss in this in this clip uh where this is my this is my favorite clip of her by the way Dream guest on my podcast? Oh my gosh. I mean, honestly, let's play think about one of my exes. Oh? No one laughs. Dream guest on my podcast? <laughs> let's spice things up a bit. One of my exes. Oh. <laughs> Looking around for people to laugh. No one laughs. I didn't That's... know she had a podcast. Who's listening to that? Dream guest on my podcast? Hey guys, welcome to the JoJo Siwa podcast. Today, we're talking about eating pussy and my exes. Oh, no one laughs. I need to look at the JoJo Siwa podcast. What? What? What I'm, is? I'm trying to look for. It. I can't find it. Dream guest on my podcast? Maybe it was a theoretical question. Like, if you had a podcast, what would it be? JoJo Siwa. She's podcast. been on Call Her Daddy. So okay, that would that would be. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she doesn't have a podcast. A dream guest on my podcast. Um, that's so funny. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know. This this rebrand is really really confusing to me because she seems to be acting exactly the same, uh, but she's insisting that it's a rebrand and it's different. And she's released this music video, um, which we can't play because of copyright. And uh, I have to say that it's got to be one of the most obnoxious, loud, and annoying songs I've ever heard from a YouTuber. And that's saying a lot. Come as a bitch! And da, 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 da. That's how it goes. Dude, the song has a fucking alarm in it. Don't put an alarm in your song. Hey? If you're putting a fucking alarm in your song throughout it, Again and again and again. It's too loud. And she's already fucking loud. And the, the, the film clip as well is uh, is just like her um, dressed as a member from Kiss, um, scissoring in the sand. Which, I, I don't know, I'm not a lesbian woman, but I imagine a sandy scissor is probably not what you would want. Have you just uh, messaged me the the lyrics lyrics. here? All right. Was a bad girl. I did some bad things. I swear I did it all for fun and it meant nothing. I'm rhyming thing with things there. Uh, It never happened. It was a secret. Like when a tree falls in a forest, no one hears it. Another late night, another crazy mood. Imagine it this time. You can't even hear the drums. You just hear dream guest on my podcast. No one laughs. Um, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not cheat. Thou shalt not get caught or you'll end up just like me. Come as a bitch. I wish I'd known better. <laughs> I, if I had a wish, I... 
I would have never effed around. She's still not swearing. When I saw the pics of you and her, I felt the knife twist. Calm as a bitch. And she's with you right now. Dream guest on my podcast. Ring. Yeah, this is, um, I don't know. Why is she dressed like Kiss? That's what I want. That's like, that's what I want to know. And well, also what's, what's um, fascinating about this girl is uh, after spending her enchi- entire childhood getting hit with sticks for not pulling off the correct dance move at the right time, this chick sucks at dancing. Every time she dances, it looks like she's having a seizure or there's like uh, some invisible person just like hitting her and she's reacting to that impact. Um, like she has a couple of backup dancers in here and they're, they're actually kind of doing it well, but she, like every time, I feel like every single JoJo Siwa dance move just seems to be like her getting hit in the face with something and then she like swings her neck around She's going to give herself whiplash is how how, it, how how I'd explain her dance style is like just getting into a car accident without a seatbelt. Like her limbs and her neck is just like whipping around at the speed of sound. It's very confusing to me. You know, if she really wanted to rebrand, I feel like also like she, unfortunately she kind of is, is like about 10 years too late to rebranding like this because I feel like what she's done is she's gone, oh, you know what? I'm going to shock the world. (laughs) I think girls are pretty sexy. Yeah, I said it. I think she's only just turned 18 though. Has she? Yeah. She looks like 21, 22. She's 20 actually. 20. Yeah, she's still pretty young. I think being gay is still new to her. New to her for sure, yeah. But what I mean is it's it's not new to the world of like, a giant star coming out as gay. Like, like it's definitely new and must be very scary and crazy for her. But saying in an interview, <laughs> I think girls are pretty sexy. Everyone goes, yeah, we've done that. You know, Katy Perry, I kissed a girl. That was when it was, what the fuck? What the fuck? That's on the radio. And she definitely isn't into women. <laughs> so... Now coming out and being like, yeah, I'm gay. It's like, yeah, dude, we've had uh, we've had G Flip for like five years here in Australia. Uh, you're late. Um, you know what she needs to do? She needs to do uh, what what Miley Cyrus did, where she just needs to go on on like a, a rampage of like fucking people very publicly. Like she needs to be she she's trying to do her rebrand on camera on her own social media profiles. What she really needs to do is get um, blackout drunk with a high profile lesbian and end up in their front yard on their balcony, drunk, messed up hair. Call the paparazzi, have them arrive. That's that's how you get headlines and make people like, Jojo C was different. Just changing your pink glitter to black and dressing up as a Kiss member and going, <laughs> dream guest on my podcast. It's not cutting it for me. That's my career advice for Jojo C. Well, anyway, um, Guys, I'm going to end it there. That's the end of the episode. Um, Check out the Patreon episode, though. We're going to continue on on Patreon right now. It's up right now. There'll be a link to it in the the description or the top comment. It's up right now, and you get early access to every single episode that we do nice and early on Patreon. You also get access to the Discord server uh, where there's a bunch of other like-minded people, um, and some of them have wet handshakes. Uh, so check that out patreon.com slash loose spears uh, it really supports the show it's kind of the main source of income that's going on right now uh, with uh, after the surgeries and everything so it really really does support me don't think that it that it's doesn't it, every single bit helps so if you on the fence or you want to jump on uh, it really does help and we've got a yearly option now so you get a bit of a massive discount on it you pay once instead of once a month which I know can be annoying for some folks so uh, yeah check that out patreon.com slash loose spears and I will talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.